Hello, this is Jane Goodall with a message for all of you on World Environment Day 2022. I'm sure that most of you have seen photos of planet Earth as a small green and blue globe surrounded by the cold black immensity of space. And some of you may have seen satellite images that show how we humans have been gradually changing the environment of planet Earth. For example, in 1960, when I began my chimpanzee research in Gombe, the National Park was part of the great equatorial forest belt that stretched across Africa. But by the late 1980s, it was a small island of forest surrounded by bare hills. More people living there than the land could support, too poor to buy food elsewhere. And that's when I realized that to save the environment, we must alleviate poverty. The people in the region were cutting down trees simply in their effort to survive, to make more fertile land for growing crops, or to make money from charcoal or timber. And this is what led to JGI's Takari program, helping people to find ways of making a living without destroying their environment. The villagers in all 104 villages throughout Chimp Range in Tanzania have now become our partners in conservation, understanding that saving the environment isn't just for wildlife, but for their own future. And how fortunate that nature is so resilient. If you fly over the Gombe area today, you won't see bare hills. The trees have returned, most from seeds, and sometimes from the roots of the trees that were destroyed by humans. Also, close to the villages, there have been major tree planting efforts, indigenous trees, of course. JGI now works to alleviate poverty and restore the environment in areas around chimp habitat in other African countries, Uganda, Burundi, DRC, the Republic of Congo, Senegal, and Mali, and other NGOs are now doing similar things. We humans are but one species, but our footprint on the planet is gigantic and harms so many other species. This was not so when we were hunter-gatherers, but the one difference between us and all other creatures is that we developed this oversized brain. Our early ancestors invented weapons spears and bows and arrows and traps. And from then onward, we had an increasing advantage over other animals. Then came the agricultural revolution and human populations began to grow. Next came the industrial revolution. And from then on, our impact has become ever more destructive. We've burned increasing amounts of fossil fuel, creating massive amounts of CO2 the most prevalent greenhouse gas. We've destroyed forests and other ecosystems, releasing more CO2 into the atmosphere. We've polluted land, air and water with agricultural, industrial and household waste, much of it full of toxic chemicals. Industrial scale intensive farming has cleared huge areas of, of habitat to grow crops and led to the widespread use of chemical pesticides and herbicides. These chemicals, <clears throat> these chemicals eventually kill the soil, which then needs more artificial fertilizer. The chemicals kill not only the so-called agricultural pests and weeds, but also other insects, including pollinators, the birds that feed on them, and so on. And of course, these chemicals contaminate the groundwater that in turn flows into streams and rivers and the ocean, harming aquatic life. Then there's something people don't realize or perhaps just don't want to think about, the harm to the environment due to an increasing demand for meat around the world. Billions of animals are crammed into so-called factory farms and all must be fed grow enough grain for this, not only is the land used and abused in the way just discussed, but large amounts of water are needed to turn vegetable to animal protein. 
Moreover, moreover, all the animals produce methane gas in their digestion, a very virulent greenhouse gas. Factory farms offer various pathogens, like viruses, the opportunity to spill over from an animal to a person and possibly create new diseases, like COVID-19. And don't forget the almost unbelievable scale of suffering caused to the animals, billions of sentient beings, each one an individual capable of feeling distress, fear, and of course pain, who are treated as mere commodities, not much different from a sack of wheat grains. We tend to forget that our military, even in peacetime, makes a huge impact on the environment as it tests new weapons of defense and offense and conducts exercises. And just think of the harm to the environment caused by the emissions from tanks and planes and bombs and all the rest of it during actual war. It's happening now as Putin's forces attack Ukraine. Well, all of that is grim, but don't despair. Change is in the air. People are listening to the voices of the indigenous people who for hundreds of years have been guardians of the natural world. Protection of the environment is now high on the political agendas of most countries around the world. New bills are being passed in governments and city councils. Environmental lawyers are helping people to protect their land, often pro bono. So, you see, from understanding comes caring. From caring comes action. There are protests that cross party political lines and can involve people from around the globe. Social media plays a major role in this. Our very own Roots and Shoots members, hundreds and thousands of them of all ages in over 60 countries, are working on projects of their choice to make things better for this interconnected world of people, animals and the environment. They understand that our human health is closely related to the health of the environment and that of the wild and domestic animals with whom we share or should share the planet. Today, World Environment Day, is a time for all of us to think about how we can heal some of the harm we've inflicted on our precious blue and green planet, and how each one of us can help. We need to alleviate poverty, reduce the unsustainable lifestyle of the rest of us, learn to recycle and reuse, and we must, through consumer pressure, persuade business to operate in ways that are environmentally ethical, rather than carry on with business as usual, thinking ridiculously that there can be unlimited economic development on a planet of finite resources. And business is changing. All of us must realize that long-term protection of the environment and indigenous culture is more important than short-term profit. I expect on this World Environment Day, there'll be an awful lot of tree planting and support for those working to restore and protect forests and other environments. I hope that more people will be thinking about a plant-based diet and supporting things like restorative agriculture, permaculture, and so on, and choosing not to buy products that are cheap because of environmental or animal abuse or unfair wages paid to people in other countries. There's one thing I want to beg of all of you. Don't help the environment on this one day only. Try to create as light an environmental footprint as you can every day. Even if you do only something small, remember that millions of small things cumulatively lead to major change. You, as an individual, make a difference. Oh, and do let us know what you do to help the planet today so we can share good news all around the world. And sharing good news is desperately important today.
because it gives people hope. And without hope, we become apathetic and do nothing. So, thank you, and bye for now.